that's I just, just going right into it. So, yes. uh, go by the Grouse, aka Brandon. I don't hide my name, although people very rarely call me that. Fair enough. But they can. I don't. I'm not opposed to it. Hmm. Live in Iowa. Grew up on a farm, raising crops, stuff like that. Really agricultural community. My my graduating class in high school was like 21 people or something. Like it's super. Super small, super middle of the nowhere type situation. Mm -hmm. And just always in the games, always doing stuff like that. Always wanted to entertain, did like speech class and improv and theater and, and whatnot. But then going into college, I just never kind of was like, when, when you're living in the middle of nowhere, it's like that's not a reasonable job. So I went for an IT degree. And in 2017, I joined Badger's Discord as a uh just as a fan because I, I he played a lot of battlefield back in like 2013 and i just thought he was super funny mm -hmm. and just by pure happenstance we ended up talking to each other and he thought i was funny enough to hang around with and we just ended up being friends and i remember one of the guys from the ensemble that's still with us he was like you should stream and I remember saying to him, who the fuck would watch that? <laughs> that sounds so stupid. <laughs> like, why would you watch me just, like, playing video games and rambling? Mm. And now it's uh, my occupation. <laughs> so that would have been from late 2017 to now. So around six years, I've been on and off doing stuff. Sometimes I hit it more consistently than, than other times. But, yeah. yeah, I would say around six years is how long I've been doing it so for that. So, so you knew at, at like, you know, like high school that you wanted to be an entertainer and speech classes. And I, you like, yeah. you already hit on a question I had uh, loaded in the chamber, which was improv, which mm -hmm. I mean, that is, that is, I, I can relate to that. That is a, a direction that not a whole lot of people would consider is going into theater and working on improv and, you know, practicing that sort of theater arts like when did mm -hmm. that spark with you that idea to become an entertainer i don't know when i was in like middle school and going into high school it was a super small mm. school again it was a super small community mm. and i wouldn't say i was necessarily a popular kid but i definitely wasn't really bullied everywhere at anywhere like everyone kind of liked me just off of like I would crack jokes and not really take things very seriously, just naturally. Mm. And I was like, I just had a fun time making other people laugh and just like kind of enjoying myself. So they had all the kind of makings to do theater. And when I, and in high school, we didn't have like any theater programs, like in middle school, we didn't have enough funding for that. That's just like, so that was a no. And then once I got into high school, our, singular english teacher was <laughs> like we're gonna do theater and improv stuff so you can sign up and he was like my favorite teacher influenced me a lot i just think he's like outstanding mm -hmm. and he's retired now but uh yeah so i was just like i just want to like hang out with this, this guy mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. i want to do theater and and we went did improv and went to like state competitions and stuff and and did all that stuff and yeah, I think it really just kind of came out of more of a, like, I just enjoyed screwing around and having a good time with with my buddies and having, like, a little ensemble troupe and just kind of doing whatever. Hmm. And also improv is a unique challenge in that, you know, since you pull it out of a hat and it's always different, you just kind of need to go with it. So Absolutely. I like it more than maybe scripted, like... Uh, I, I forget the exact word that, but we had categories for like scripted sets and like scenes that you would perform in front of people, and it's like I always disliked that more than just screwing around and mm -hmm. coming up with some, some random shit on the fly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, were you inspired by uh, improv artists or comedians uh, at a young age to help spark this? Whose line it is in anyway was pretty good back in the day. Yeah, I feel like absolutely. everyone I feel like everyone who's on improv at some point within like the two thousands <laughs> <laughs> has has seen their fair share of, of whose line is it anyway. Yeah. So Yeah, but I, I don't know. I think I don't know if it was inherently direct inspiration, but it's definitely something that I looked at a lot and I remember like a lot of like 
even just stand up specials being played a lot in the house when mm. I was growing up and stuff. So there was never a lack of comedians going around. But yeah, it, it was never something where I was like, I want to inherently be a comedian. I was just like, I just thought it was fun to to do. So yeah, no, yeah. That's, that's fair. I ask because, uh, like you, like I, I went the route of entertainer and. Uh, my, I can recall many years ago when I was younger, my dad had uh, vinyls of Steve mm-hmm. Martin, Cheech and Chong, the McLean yep. brothers, and I would wear those 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 things out. Like I would listen yeah. to them almost religiously because I was just enamored by how quick witted and how insanely yeah. entertaining these artists were. I, I can I can relate to that of just like. You're like, this is just like so ridiculously good. Yeah. And I'm not really sure why, but like also, you know, they're just like so quick. They always have an answer for everything. It seems like we can talk about it like later with the group some, but I think one thing that like our crew does really well is I think that like the comedic timing of everyone, Mm -hmm. or I would say most people in that ensemble is just so spot on like someone always has some shit to say <laughs> and, I, and it's so good like i and everyone can like bounce off each other uh, like if you th- there's not a whole lot to me anyway mm. that replaces like just someone saying the right thing at the right time yeah as like a punchline yeah. because you can do like set up jokes and punchlines and all this like really long one stuff and that's great but then like sometimes someone just like hits you with like just two or three words at the right time and it's just so good yeah no absolutely it's that spontaneity and the chemistry that you and your your crew have developed over the years uh, you yeah. you joined the russian badgers uh group uh, before you started streaming, that's right, right? Yep. You started streaming in 2017, and it was a couple of years before that. You, uh, I joined, I joined the Discord, right, and became friends with Badger in May of 2017. Oh, okay, so it was shortly and thereafter. Then, yeah, and and then I went into college at the end of 2017, mm. and it might have been the end of college. I think it was, yeah, it was. It would have been like October of 2017. Okay. So it would have been about like five months after. Gotcha. So, so yeah, and they were probably the main reason I even started. So Who would even know where you would be without the support yeah. and also the encouragement? Do you, do you, can you recall the early days of you jumping onto, I can only assume, Twitch and uh, yep. streaming? Do you recall what that was oh, like? Oh, yeah. I... I started in my, when I was in college, mm. I had basically like my college had, it's having like dorms, they just had apartments you would rent. Mm. So I had a one bedroom, one bathroom, living room. It was a decent sized apartment for 425 a month with like full utilities and stuff. And I lived alone, I didn't have a roommate. And uh, I just, I would get on my computer and I would just stream Siege Mm -hmm. or at the time it was Call of Duty World War II which was just the most recent one and I would just like play zombies and just like podcast which is funny enough is uh, I don't know if you've watched any of my streams but like is still what I do (laughs) (laughs) nothing changed I, I just I just hop on Call of Duty or Siege or Payday, mm. and I literally just talk for like two hours about random nonsense. Mm. And yeah, now there's just a lot more viewers, which is kind of weird. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I remember like I would just do like zombies and just talk about random shit mm. <laughs> yeah. for for hours. And one thing that I think is the, one of the biggest changes is I can't, I feel like my stamina has gone down <laughs> with my age because I remember like when I first started streaming, I would stream for like six hours just mm. easily. And now I stream for like two and a half or three. And I'm just like, yeah, what a, what a day. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. And well, I'm going to bed. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, bedtime, fellas. <laughs> so, but yeah. So I, I remember like the, the first, 
time streaming. Mm. Hmm. I don't know. I, I didn't quite exude like any like stage fright or, or weird stuff. I kind of just like am doing what I'm doing now, where I just like talk, <laughs> talk people's ears off, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was fun though. It was fun enough for me doing to like keep going because. I tell people a lot when they want to be streamers and stuff. It's like, if you're in it for the money, like you, you need to do it for a while. <laughs> Cause, <laughs> Cause you ain't, you ain't getting any for a bit. Yeah. So being a college student and doing it, I was just doing it cause I had fun with it and I like talking. So yeah, no, it, yeah. D- d- relying on yourself and being a content creator uh, online or mainstream media or wherever it may be. And like you, you start off possibly essentially volunteering, but also investing in yourself to try to set yourself up for something yeah. better or or more comfortable or spectacular or whatever the case may be mm-hmm. and a lot of a lot of people not unlike yourself they build a community they build a following and they build uh, friendships be it in real life or online those yeah. first ones that interact with you uh, at the early days of streaming, like, do you have those with you, like, still to this day? Like, you can call them the hardcore grouse fans. Yeah, I I have hardcore grouse fans that have ascended past even being fans of me anymore, and are now <laughs> just like my friends. Like, I have a an excellent young man by the name of Calvin that I'll drop, and mm-hmm. he actually ended up. So I was streaming. And I think it was in 2018 or mm-hmm. 2019. I think it was around 2019. Or, no, it might have been 2018. It was around 2018, I'll say. Be safe. And mm-hmm. uh, he was going into boot camp. He was going through basic, and he got injured. Oh. And while he was like in the infirmary, he was on his phone, and he would just watch my stream to like spend time and then once he got home he was like i'd love to play siege and we just hung out and we became good friends and i talked to him every day now like years later and he's in the badger group like as a now a, a mainstay and that like mm-hmm. he still mods the stream and he, he hangs out a lot but it's like that guy was just like hardcore just like every day would be pulling up and and now he's ascended past the point of like even being a fan now he's just just a good friend. like someone that's just in my life constantly <laughs> that, that i can't seem to shake for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and yeah so and I, I definitely have others like i'll have people that subscribe for like 65 months or something and i'm like jesus like <laughs> you guys need to chill out a little bit (laughs) so enough with the love what the fuck man yeah 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 like you guys know what i do right (laughs) (laughs) this is it so but yeah it it feels good to have people that are so dedicated that Mm. they'll be sticking around for that long Mm. and it's also interesting to see like the progression of like what was just a friend back in the day or not even a friend what was a fan back in the day and then how that can turn into a friend or how that can turn into like a friend of a friend like i i had this one guy named Sirzith in my community who would watch my streams like every day mm-hmm. and then i was watching one of my friends streams just out of nowhere and they were like playing a game together it was Sirzith and like the streamer that i was already friends with. i was like whoa you know this fucking guy and i was like that so just like the the kind of the spider web uh, connections between everyone else and how long that can like build and go on for it it's it's pretty cool to kind of see it and happen in real time yeah you know, absolutely so. absolutely yeah. It, it is it is wild to consider i mean like since the uh since the the internet has be basically become public and just made mm-hmm. the world more connected and smaller at the same time like it it reaches out to mass 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 amounts of people and then within that m- giant mass of people, there's still those small connections every once in a while that just pop up and go, well, look at that. I didn't think these two would connect. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, you always think of, like, your friends yeah. or your group is just, like, one in this, like, just ocean of other groups randomly. <laughs> yes. 
and then you start to see things between other groups making thus subsection groups and you're just like whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this disturbs the natural order of things <laughs> like, what's this overlapping thing <laughs> yeah yeah well this ain't a venn diagram yeah Just that shit up right now so, it's uh yeah it's, it's cool to mm. how like the internet make people so connected and then you, you probably shouldn't be inherently surprised by it because like it's gaming circles on the same games and like people interconnect and whatnot but it still is because i don't know we're fucking wizards or something <laughs> we're we're just entertained by exactly. by the, the simplest things we're like oh my god yeah no it, it is yeah that's just it like we're sometimes we're just dense motherfuckers we just don't <laughs> even consider it at all yeah like no way <laughs> that's not how that works um i i, I want to ask uh, probably a question you've yep. gotten uh, uh quite a few times and you know it might mm-hmm. be just me me being a dense motherfucker but you explain go for it. explain the tag grouse i actually had a different username when i first joined badger server hmm. back in like 2016 so i joined it first in 2016 hmm. and then i got banned within a day because so i don't know if you if you were like if you know about this maybe you've heard about it but uh, back in like 2016, when Badger first started the Discord, he had like no administrative like setup in it. It was okay. basically just the Wild West. It was like motherfuckers getting shot in the street, executions, just like it was. It was going crazy. No filter. And there, no filter. Yeah. No like anything. Yeah. And <laughs> so he had a mod who was just. Yeah, actually, the mod was streaming on Twitch, and he streamed him just going down the right side of the Discord that had the 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 list of users, right. and just banning like a thousand people just because he was like, "Screw him! I you can do whatever you want." And um, anyway, that happened for a while. I remember I joined the Discord, and there was a little Rainbow Six voice channel, and I'd never used Discord before. I was always a big Xbox guy, right? And I was, so I typed in the general chat. I was like, if anyone wants to play Rainbow Six, come into the Rainbow Six voice channel. And I join. And five minutes later, the server doesn't appear on my screen anymore. And I'm just like, oh, well, (laughs) it is what it is. And I just went back to doing what I was doing. Okay. And then, uh, and then later, like a a couple months later, I try to join back. Hmm. And uh, I can because since the mod got removed, everyone's ban who was banned by them got lifted. Right. So I came in and I was like, I need a, a name to maybe not associate me with the account that got banned because I still didn't know the context of the situation on why I was banned. I just <laughs> right. thought that they fucking hated me or something. I'll just sneak <laughs> in the side door here. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of the side door under a new name. <laughs> and I was thinking about it and I was like, well, it's like, it, it's kind of a, a deep thing where I was trying to think of a name and my family on my dad's side, the farm that I grew up on mm. uh, has been running for over a hundred years i got it from or we actually got an award recently in like 2020 i think it was for being a centennial farm in america you got a, a piece of paper from the u.s government that was like having a farm that's ran for a hundred concurrent years wow and yeah and so my great grandfather had immigrated from scotland to the u.s and he started up a farm that is down the road from where i grew up Mm. and it was the same like plot of property and then my family just lived on that piece of land for a hundred years and his last name before he immigrated when he was still in scotland was it meant uh black chicken oh and a black Scottish chicken as a grouse. Right. And so that's so that that was kind of like that's a cool grouse is also like it's animals. I a big nature guy. Mm-hmm. It's also not a very popular animal. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's like it's unique. It's yeah. not like eagle or some shit. Like it's yeah. kind of, you know, it's and then it, it also 
it, it pays a little bit of an homage to my great grandfather who did like in his uh in his 30s mm. immigrate from scotland to big scary america and big scary. become a f- and become a farmer and we still do it so you know shout out to him towards your family i mean congratulations a, a, a farm that has lasted 100 years plus i mean that's that's yeah. amazing that is Pretty incredible crazy. And uh, secondly, uh, as, I, as I stated before, I live in British Columbia, Canada, and uh, grouse are actually uh, wild birds yeah. uh, that live in our forests and mm-hmm. in British Columbia. So, yeah, I, I've there's been some grouse hunting in like I hear about it a lot in Canada. I hear mm-hmm. about it in northern parts of the United States. I'm in Iowa where it's done a little bit, but it's not quite north enough where you see them a lot but it's still like it's a known bird i i I still knew about it to make it a name it was just Hmm. i was looking for something that wasn't like i was looking for a name that was naturey because i think animals are great but also it's like kind of quirky and not quite like like i was saying the eagle wolf bear like yeah all very very played out sometimes so i was yeah. like grouse is i've never heard of someone like even talking about a grouse before. Yeah. So, so that makes it unique <laughs> no that's fair absolutely and it's, it's one of the reasons why like i was immediately you know you caught my attention it's like that's a very obscure unique name <laughs> uh, yeah. yes uh, i get a lot of people like friends colleagues viewers they're like i don't even know what a grouse was i thought it was just a word i'm like yeah <laughs> it's like it's like yeah it's a bird yeah. <laughs> it's a, this this fat fucking bird that just sits around and, and gets shot usually <laughs> so you doesn't know. fly very well doesn't uh, taste yeah. very good <laughs> no no he just gotta do his thing you joined the server in 2017 and then you know this yep. is uh due to becoming a fan of the russian badger and yep the growing crew that eventually become the mainstay, which we all know and love today. And yep. uh, over the years, pre and post pandemic, you guys have not only put down, put out an incredible amount and high quality uh, content uh, with great jokes, dirty jokes and poor taste jokes all together, uh, but you've it's also a been, specialty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so, you know. you've also been on some incredible adventures. Uh, you've been invited and attended uh, giant tournament events and charity events. Yep. And did you ever, ever consider you would find yourself in this situation? Not at all. <laughs> not, not in the fucking slightest. I like. It was weird because growing up. Uh, being like a kid on like the xbox era and stuff you would see youtube videos and stuff and like machinima back when it was first starting out and just like all these content like scene anders and just like content creators that would just like have fun with their friends online you're like that's so cool and you watch those videos and it reminds you of you and your friends Mm -hmm. and it's like like it's just so awesome to be able to to like watch that and then i became friends with uh, I became friends with Badger and had all these other guys that I became friends with. And then suddenly that was in 2017 in 2019, we went to, we all went to North Carolina together. And then we went to TwitchCon the same year on the other side of the country. And then we went to Canada and now post pandemic, uh, in 2020, we didn't go anywhere because that was in the middle of, of COVID. And right. then since 2021, we were like, we are never doing that again. So in 2021, in the summer, we went to Colorado for a vacation. We didn't even go for an event. It was just all of us just hanging out for a week. And then in 2022, we went to Seattle. And just last uh, July, we went to uh, New York City. So we're just, it's like the company of just having all the fellows around is, is good. So yeah, yeah, I never would have imagined that I would be traveling with my boss, colleagues, and more importantly, friends, uh, just like around the country, just like doing random (laughs) shit. (laughs) Yeah. Like it's so, it was, it was just so like unexpected. Yeah. 
I could have never even considered the possibility when I was in school and I joined a discord and I was like, these are the people that I'm going to be friends with mm. six years <laughs> down the road. And I'm still sitting in this discord talking to people. So it's pretty <laughs> crazy. And, and nowadays, like you have the uh, added bonus in like realization that you go to an area and uh, you, you get fans, you get people who recognize yeah. you, you get recognition for, you know, who you are and the work that you do and your personality like that. I, I hope I certainly hope and I know it's most likely true like that never gets old yeah it doesn't because <laughs> like I feel like maybe if you have like a, a toxic community maybe or just like maybe if you have so many fans that it happens so constantly that you're just like I just want to go to the grocery store type situation yeah. then like that'd be bad but like like that never happens we normally it's like once on a trip or a couple times on a trip or if you go to an event like uh i went to in 2022 Hmm. i went to a siege event just by myself it was gonna be me and heavenly we're gonna go and then heavenly's flight got canceled so i was just riding solo Hmm. and uh and still like even solo like so many people were just like coming up being like hey we miss like badger making the siege videos with you guys and all this stuff like you should totally do more and and just like like we hadn't really made a siege video in like years <laughs> and there were <laughs> yeah. people that were still just like yo we need to we, you guys need to do that stuff again so it was really cool to to see that and yeah. yeah i remember like when i went to canada in 2020 and i was working a acer or no it was an asus okay. booth yeah. with uh, with Badger we were doing like a signing and like meet and greet and stuff and I was just signing stuff constantly and I was telling my parents about it and they were just like oh my god my, <laughs> my son autographs <laughs> things for, for like two hours it's like yeah I know right it's, it's weird to be the <laughs> the the kid from Iowa and you're just like signing people's random shit constantly yeah. so yeah, yeah. Uh, you 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 referenced it earlier. Your your boss, your colleagues, your friends. Uh, mm-hmm. What you do and and what you uh, create with your group is very much a job. We actually would have uh, had a, had this opportunity to chat a little while ago, but you got pulled away because there was a new project uh, that yeah. was uh, just coming up. Like what? If you don't mind, like a peek mm-hmm. behind the curtain, what is the uh, the process of like? Okay, there's something that we got to work together with. Like, what's the step by step? How that's done? So, it's pretty natural. We kind of just like like we'll just be sitting in CTE, which is the formal name for the group. Okay. But we have a CTE voice channel. That's why we named the group CTE, because that's where we're always sitting. Right. And it kind of just is the embodiment of where we hang out. And uh, so we'll all be in CTE, just talking every day. Mm. And Badger, when he's done with the video, he'll join. And he's just like, all right, motherfuckers, what are you guys doing? And then Heavenly will be like, I'm playing Fortnite. And then I'll be like, I'm playing Payday. And someone will be like, I'm playing Call of Duty, and I'm playing Marvel, and all this other stuff. And he's just like marvel sounds fun let's do that oh okay (laughs) and then then we're just like all right so we all just hop on and we just crack jokes and and do that and sometimes uh depending on the game recording sessions take like two hours and Mm -hmm. then he has a video that could be cranked out in a month or however long it he takes because he he really takes his time on him Mm -hmm. and then uh sometimes uh there are certain videos uh, I mentioned a lot on stream like World of Tanks and like War Thunder where sometimes it takes a bit more recording. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> sometimes sometimes uh, the, the comedic juices aren't flowing. <laughs> so <laughs> so it takes a little bit more effort. Yeah. But yeah, we could we there were definitely videos like playing Payday or Call of Duty or something where it's just everyone's on point and everything's funny. Mm. And it's like an hour and a half or two hours and it's just hilarious. Mm. But then we keep going because we're just having a good time. But it's like you could stop making the video right there. But yeah. Yeah. So really it's just Badger will just ask like what would be what would be funny? What would be good? Or he, he also has ideas of like 
games that maybe he wants to play specifically like he was kind of late to it but he wanted to do a modern warfare 2 video of like mm-hmm. the multiplayer and war zone mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then we ended up just playing the multiplayer constantly because the the death mics are just way too funny <laughs> oh i got a chopper gunner hell yeah oh i got i got jugger you got a jug you got a jug Yo, what the Kevin. wait toggle music hell yeah and yeah you get proxy chat in warzone but like i feel like with, with warzone inherently and also dmz like people are like especially with dmz people are incentivized to be nice mm. and that's cool <laughs> but the dev mics and, and multiplayer are just so like unhinged <laughs> that it's like we need this like yeah you, you don't go into dmz and you like shoot someone and then it's like a, a 10 year old child like barking like a dog <laughs> or something <laughs> that's just so like he's just so pissed <laughs> that, that his life has just come like shattering around him oh that was a lot of fun thanks for playing dudes <laughs> Did you just let off a flashbang dog in your own room? Where are your parents, bro? Are you barking at me? Yeah, so he has ideas, we have ideas. What I like about it is that it's very collaborative, Mm. where it's like, it's not like he's just like, we're doing this game, crack a whip. It's like, we kind of talk about it, and then whatever everyone's kind of feeling, whatever we think would be fun, really, it's Mm. like, obviously we don't make videos in a vacuum so it's like right. if call of duty has a lot of like hype on it and we're all f- it, not even necessarily if like videos get a lot of viewership we don't even look at that it's more just like if we're feeling excited for it then like mm-hmm. let's do it mm-hmm. rather than like any other reason we kind of just do it and then we record once he's done he takes all the footage and just like <laughs> goes into his cave and we don't see him for like a month yeah <laughs> like yeah, he, yeah yeah he, he he is a machine when it comes to editing he just goes and goes and goes and goes and every once in a while i'll walk into his cave and poke him with a stick and be like how's that video coming yeah, he's yeah. just like oh it's such a banger I have one more month before it's done <laughs> wow, and, like, and I'm, like, okay. I'm, I'm like okay <laughs> no because like we recorded June 22nd is when I said I need to do a rain check. We're doing a recording today for the fighting game tournament. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. So June 22nd is when that was recorded. The video's still not out. No, We're in not. August. <laughs> the video's not out yet. It's been two months. Yeah. Like, he's still working on it. And yeah. I love him because... Granted, we did go on a trip to New York for a week and right. some other stuff like that, but it's like, like so, that's his nine to five. Like he has not been working on anything else. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, that, yeah. So, like so, that video is it. So two two months minus a week, he has been grinding away, and you po- you poke him with a stick every once in a while. Like, dude, you want a grilled cheese sandwich? <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just like, yo, you need like water, yeah. electrolytes. Do you need like Powerade or something? Yeah. He's like, no, I'm fine, and he just goes. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, man, <laughs> like you're he. I, I've never met someone that has such a stunning work ethic, mm-hmm. but like I've talked to him about it. It's not even like work ethic. It's just like he loves video editing and yeah. the idea of like, every, you, you know, like whenever people talk about making YouTube videos, it's like you don't need your first video to be amazing. You just need to be something and then you can build off of it. Absolutely. He, like he st- he's still lives by that philosophy where it's like every video, I want to do something a little better. Mm. So, like, every video he's striving to, like, learn a new technique of animation or just, like, other stuff. And by that point, he's just, like, so, and I love him for it, he's so obsessed with, like, getting better and better Mm. that, like, he's just, like, I've been working on this video for two months and I will happily work on it for another month if that's what it takes to make it better. And, like, he just is so about it. So, yeah, I love it. I I I I don't know if I have his sort of skills or dedication but I I can say like being an editor myself I not only do I do yeah. my own work but I also edit for other content creators it, I mm-hmm. know that mentality of like get the first video out learn from it build on that and then just continue to go up from there and it's 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 very much the practice makes perfect mantra where okay so the first one wasn't great but it's a starting point you can move from there Yeah. Yeah.
a lot of people are I, I, i've i've had this issue i know a lot of people have this issue i know like big content creators who have this issue where it's like i don't want to do this first thing because like maybe other people are doing it and i don't want to be seen as like maybe like i'm biting their content or something or it's like i don't want to do this or this or this and it's like you've gotta bite the bullet and just say like this is probably not gonna be shit but it's probably gonna be subpar or below maybe what i want it to be yeah but at least when you put it out there you can figure out what you like and what you don't like and what's receptive and you can kind of use it as your base to uh, to then do more and more so it's not like every video it's not like you need to put out a video and get like 12 million views on it you just need to put out a video and kind of figure out what direction you want to go in and then you can catalog it and yeah then you'll have like someone who's like i saw this person's first youtube video it was shit and it's like yeah but everyone's first video is shit that's kind of <laughs> how you that's kind of how you do it like that's no, kind of how this that's kind of how this works so absolutely far. yeah it, it's interesting like i you you and your crew find yourself in this very unique situation where you know okay so russian badger will come in every once in a while to your to your group and go like what are you guys playing all right cool let's go with that one and then other times yep. it'll be very much a, uh, a a direct like we need to do a video on this mm-hmm. uh world <laughs> of tanks or yeah or blah, 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 blah. yeah exactly mm-hmm. right yeah but also like you guys have this very unique power and situation where you can actually influence games out there you've put so much time and effort and one of the games that you enjoy uh and it's just celebrating its 10-year anniversary is payday 2 Mm -hmm. the spoon (laughs) yeah the spoon everyone loves it i get i get more comments in my stream chat about the spoon (laughs) than like anything else it's it's ridiculous Everyone loves the spoon. Ago, we had the comically stupid idea of bullying the Payday 2 developers into adding a comically large spoon to the game by dropping some not so subtle hints. So they like, adore it. That 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 was just like literally just uh, reference after reference, and uh, as as you and the Badger and the rest of your crew have put out there, straight out bullying to the developers of Payday 2 to yeah. put this damn thing in the game. We saw we yeah. saw what happened. And lo and behold, uh, not there only she is. there she is, and also like it was just announced, Payday Three is coming yeah. out, and uh, you guys like, what's your involvement with that? Well, one thing I want to say on the spoon, yes, is that it's just so damn funny <laughs> that, <laughs> that the devs let us do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, and Payday Two has been like one of my favorite games since like 2013. I love co-op games. I was I super. It's funny because like, I like humor and cracking jokes and stuff. But like, one of my favorite genres has always been kind of like noir, neo noir, like kind of dark crime, maybe just like weird philosophy kind of stuff like that. So like, uh, like Heat is just he's just such a damn good movie. Right. And right. like my my favorite my favorite and first Tarantino movie I ever watched was Reservoir Dogs classic and it's like i I love reservoir dogs and so it's like kind of this idea of heisting and it's like a group of a small group of people can then surmount really big odds if everything's planned well enough and you have kind of kind of everything set up in the right way and it's like that's a really attractive idea right and so i just loved payday and i remember getting badger to play payday was so difficult really (laughs) yes because he always thought it was cool, but he never like got the time for it. I was bombarded with all these words and concepts and shit that I didn't understand. Like a seven year flood was drowning me slowly. There are so many words being said right now that I don't understand. When Dodge Crib build Infamy 25 level 100 been playing the game since day one, literally sucked off Almir Listo. Please let me in. <laughs> Because we were doing Siege pretty hardcore and all this stuff. Right. So I introduced the idea of us playing Payday back in like 2018. And he didn't make his first Payday video until I think it was like August of 2020. I think so, yeah. Like when COVID happened. Yeah. So it's like when he was locked indoors, he was like, all right, I'll finally do it. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and then he just fell in love with it. And we were, we were just doing so much stuff. And the... <laughs> 
the uh, the king batch vine of the only a spoonful and he has this massive spoon it's like the <laughs> stupidest joke of prop comedy yeah you could ever ask for and we're like we just need to put this in the game so boyd the devs they did it uh the one negative of it is that now that they've seen you've done it once you get a lot of viewers that are like you should bully them to add <laughs> blank into the game and i'm just like all right buddy everybody has everybody's an ideas guy yeah, just saying yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just just throw it out there but uh to to circle back my or our involvement with payday 3 isn't that glamorous i would say okay. it's more just like i so we did the april fool's day video yeah did you ever see that the the uh american psycho parody yeah yeah we got overkill the developers of payday 2 they were like this we always do an april fool's day joke and this is the 10 year anniversary so we want to do something pretty pretty big yeah we want to do a good bit and you guys are the the kings of good bits so we want to do an american psycho parody and at first we weren't going to voice it we were just going to write it mm. and badger was going to animate it and then we were like we need voice actors and i was like fuck it we'll do it and so we just we did that got everyone in everybody thought it was hilarious mostly <laughs> there, were a few, there were a few people that were like these fucking clowns are in my game <laughs> and, was just like, yeah, yeah. and uh so i got invited to the payday like partner program right. and i became more in touch with the devs and stuff and so i've gotten to play payday 3 a few times like behind closed doors and and stuff and they've they said that's totally fine to talk about and whatnot, but it's just like generally our our involvement with Payday Three hasn't been too crazy. It's okay. kind of it's been more of the position of just like myself as like an adoring fan, gotcha. <laughs> and then and then Badger being like, "I'm making this Marvel vs. Capcom video, <laughs> and when Payday Three comes out, I'll make a video. On it, but <laughs> I'll get to it when I like, get to it. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I've got so much shit going on. Like, yeah, I don't blame you. So." Yeah, but ever since that April Fools video, they they were just like you guys are funny and we want to like do stuff with you and it's like all right, cool. We can we can definitely crack some jokes with the fellas, which is off topic, but like growing up and playing like Payday 1 and Payday 2, mm -hmm. they always had so many like jokes in their game that I was like I really want to work with overkill even when i was like just going for it in college and stuff i was like those devs are so cool because i just thought they were hilarious they would like you get an achievement for throwing the loot in the water and then you get an achievement called fish ai making fun of <laughs> call of duty for having fish that move when you get too close to it. <laughs> so it's like like within it and that and that was Payday 2 released at the end of 2013 yeah. and that joke was from summer of 2013 like they're very punctual on, oh, yeah. on what they make fun of oh yeah so I always respected them for it because it's like wow they're really into it yeah absolutely so, you gotta love yeah. a studio who has like the the uh, the ability for forward thinking being relevant but also like able to just you know, recognize a joke and and mm -hmm. run with it the way that they do yeah that's, I love them and like getting more involved with their devs and with their community managers and their lead like marketing people and stuff it's like everyone there is just so in tune with like like everyone they take stuff seriously because it's a company but also at the same time it's like they're very keen on like like they will crack a joke if they see the opportunity and i i really respect it where i'm like like this guy's trying to make like money on payday but yeah. he's just He'll be in the middle of a meeting, and he's like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll crack like five jokes when the when this kind of scene arises." So, yeah, I love them. I love working with them. I think they're great. That's awesome. And I'm super excited for three. Yeah. So I want to I want to play uh, a, a little bit of a, a, a game fitting okay. the bill, and uh, this is in association or this is connected to uh, your crew. I'm going to yep. ask you uh, who best fits the bill when it comes to a certain gotcha. category. Um, okay. You could feel free to pass, <laughs> but I'm not going to hit. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to just go for it. <laughs> All right. Ma 
maybe I don't know. I mean, you might you might have some rather dire. No, <laughs> God, here. you, you okay. give me too much credit here. I'm not that smart. Come on. Okay. All, All right. right. So who fits the bill? Know. Who's the best cook? Me and and Heavenly. Really? Yeah. Whenever we do the trips out we are the ones that are in the grocery store like picking up everything for 14 guys and we're the ones like grilling and cooking everything pretty much he he has an experience cooking i grew up with no neighbors on a farm in the middle of nowhere so and like walmart yeah there was no fast food within like a 25 mile radius and walmart was like a 30 minute drive so it's like there was no uber eats or delivery or fast food anything so i just had to learn how to cook everything from like a young age so i just had a lot of experience cooking so that's what so yeah me me and heavenly i would say are the the best we're kind of the default whenever we're on trips the the cooking dads of standing (laughs) atop the grill and just kind of watching it do its thing and yeah yeah so that that's definitely us too okay uh who uh who would get Lost the quickest in a new town or city? I think me. <laughs> you? Probably. Yeah, I, I, th- I think that's a... Because, like, again, like, guy that lives on his family farm that's been around for 100 years, it's like, I'm very, like, slow-paced. Like, we were in New York City, and I was like, I was keeping up, but it was a struggle. So, it's like, I could definitely see myself. I was in, like, a new city that I knew nothing about. It's like, I my ass would get lost. (laughs) Like, like, I'm definitely glad that when we were on the New York trip, we had, like, five people in the Badger group that are all from New York City because they were excellent guides. But, yeah, probably probably me. It's one of those situations you just can't pull up the fucking mini-map. Yeah, exactly. Well, you kind of do. You got your (laughs) – everyone's got a phone with with seven versions of Google Maps on it, but, yeah. True. Yeah, sadly, I, I would I would say me. All like right. I'm used to, I get in my car and I drive for 25 minutes on a road with no turns, <laughs> and then I'm at where I need to be. Like yeah. it's it's so simple. Yeah. So when going to something so crazy as like NYC or something, it's like this is definitely a different arena. Gotcha. No, makes sense. Yep. I get it. All right, uh, a question that's gonna purposely direct yep. away from you uh thankfully yeah, I, I felt bad but i was like it's honest like it's yeah. probably good. no it's fair uh who are the three people you would call first during an emergency Oof. um i would pick probably heavenly i think is one of my my rocks one of my my best friends that i've had hmm. uh also mickey i don't know if He's he's not as like vocal in the video, but he definitely has good bits. I think Mickey, also a New Yorker, just super humble, super down to earth. He doesn't like how do I put it? He doesn't make himself known often, but mm-hmm. Mickey is like one of those dudes that like even if he doesn't understand a situation, he's like, I'm just down. He's like, I'll just jump into this like no matter what it takes he, he's at he's and at 4 a.m phone call bring a shovel yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah and he's just like okay <laughs> yeah, sure <laughs> 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 whatever and he's like already up and then uh and then i would say he's not in the videos a lot because he served a stint in the military mm. and even with like now that he's out he's not but we have a guy named bees AKA that's a lot of bees, AKA literal bee storm, okay. AKA literally 1000 bees <laughs> and, uh, AKA again, Ryan. And, uh, yeah, he's not in the videos a ton, but he's definitely in some, in some older ones in some older siege videos before he got into the service. Gotcha. And, uh, I, I would say him, he's, he, he's a rock. He's a great guy. And, uh, kind of, I, I think also he's, I think he should be in more videos. I think he's underdeveloped because, like, he has such good monotone delivery. He's super deadpan. This guy, <laughs> like, just does not get bothered by, like, anything. Yeah. So I would I would love to introduce more people to him. I think he's great. Every every, every group needs that deadpan straight pitch guy, you know? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. just what he does. And he's, like, I remember we went 
in the New York trip that we went on just recently, he really wanted to go hiking. Mm. So me and him got up at seven in the morning when everyone else was asleep and we recruited like two other guys and we just hopped in a car and drove an hour away from everyone while everyone else was still asleep and I had no idea where we were. And and we we're like, fuck it, but we're just gonna go hiking and we were just doing our thing. So yeah, I, I love Ryan, he's a great guy. Gotcha. And he should be in more videos because I need more deadpan <laughs> just like <laughs> dickhead in my life. That's kind of his <laughs> approach. Okay. Uh who has yep. the best personal style? Ooh. Let me think. Personal style by what metric? Like, like their comedic style, their style. No, 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 like no, actual, actual like, physical oh, fashion, fashion. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, uh, I think Bing, <laughs> the, the man with the broken mic himself, Bing. I, I think he's pretty, pretty swaggy sometimes. He's okay. got, as he, he's from New York. He's got that fashion appeal. He's fake gucci bags <laughs> and watches and whatnot and he's got he's got kind of a fear and loathing in las vegas cocaine core okay. mixed with like mixed with like uh growing up in the bronx harlem type vibe so he, he's got an interesting fit but i respect it I, yeah. I, I i'm gonna go with bing a standout that fits in basically yeah he's i think like we were in new york and just having like having like cargo pants with like a wife beater but then he has like a saint laurent like cr like cross body bag and just like hair tied up like i don't know just like all these different elements but he's somehow like because he's just in new york city and he's so comfortable it just like works i'm like all right go for it my man <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with bing all right and who is the worst that's that's tough i'm gonna go with uh let me think. Mm. I'm gonna go with Clue. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Clue. Clue, Clue. Just uh, <laughs> it's just like shorts or jeans, and then like dad rock t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, like, come on, man, you, yeah. you can you, you do something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I don't. It's he's uh. He knows what he's about, and I respect it. Fair enough. But, but also, it's like, come on, you, know, you, know, you can have a little, you can have a little something going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's about it, so you know, I don't, I don't blame him. Fair enough. All right. Yep, I'm gonna go with Clue. Cool. Uh, yep. Who brings the most surprises to the table? A man by the name of Bada. Bada. I haven't heard that Bada. name in a while. Bada. Bada. Boom. He. You're going to hear about him in the Marvel vs. Capcom video. That's for damn sure. All right, he cool. Pre he had never played a fighting game before other than, like, Smash. Okay. And he played Marvel vs. Capcom. And when he heard we were doing a tournament for $50 and a pair of Jays, uh, he bought MVC3 and played it for, like, 30 hours. <laughs> Just, like, <laughs> trying to figure out fighting games. He was whip ripping combos. Sadly, he got matched up in the second round, I think, against Mickey. And Mickey is a fighting game... Uh, veteran and and Mickey pounded him into the dirt. But Bot is spunky. Bot is from South Dakota. Uh, got a super good connection with with nature. He would send us like Snapchat videos of just like him being around like bears and shit yeah. <laughs> because he worked at a uh, at a drive through zoo. So like you would drive your car through, so he would like actually take care of like bear cubs and wolves and shit. Holy Christ! And yeah, and and he's also like the closest thing that I I probably experienced to a cryptid in real life. Like he's just like Bot is one of those dudes that you would see walk outside at, of your house at two in the morning. Yeah, and then he would walk out with a key to the house, and then five minutes later you hear a knock on the door and he's like backlit by the moon yeah. and, and he's just like let me in the door's locked yeah. <laughs> like if he was a skinwalker I'd, I'd believe it so yeah. he's he's just an interesting fellow but I, I love him he's just biding his he, time is he <laughs> yeah he, he definitely he and when it comes to also surprise of like jokes and stuff like he just says some shit sometimes where you're just like what the fuck are you talking about so 
I think he, he's just a bundle of surprises. What a guy. Right on. Yeah. Also, he's from, like, South Dakota, which is, like, one of the more unassuming states. Like, generally, we have a lot of people in the bedroom. We have a lot of people on the East Coast, and we have some people on the West Coast, and we have, like, two or three from the Midwest. And so it's, like, me and Bada <laughs> from the Midwest. And he's he's definitely interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to seeing what he brings to the table. Soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and then... He like say the most rancid shit ever, and then he's just like, "I'm hopping on Wizard 101." Who wants to join me? <laughs> like he he streams Wizard 101. Like that's just what he does. And I'm like, "You are insane." <laughs> like uh, like I don't know how he how he deals with everything, but yeah. <sighs> anyway, yeah, I'm gonna go with Bada. He's Bada. he's just I can't talk about him enough. The band's a fucking mystery. That's all I have for the questions, but I have one specific question for you before yep. we uh, wrap this up. Um, what is something that the mm. general population doesn't know about you because they simply haven't asked. Is it a special skill? <laughs> Is it a special interest? Yeah, I've spoken about it. I, I have two things. Mm. I've spoken about it. I'm real. I can't play music worth a damn, but I'm really into music. I think, I think like I listen to it constantly. I always have like my Spotify running whenever, basically anytime no matter what video game I'll, play, I'll be playing, where like it may be important to listen to like footsteps and stuff like that, I don't care. I just always have music blaring, right? And uh, so, and I don't play any of it on stream, so people don't really get a taste of it. But I recently created a music recommendation channel in my Discord to kind of share it around, and like, and people often ask me what my favorite like metal bands are, mm. and I hate metal. <laughs> really? really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I do not like it. I don't know. It was just like growing up, we listened to a lot of genres in the house, from country to rock and all the sorts of different stuff. But it's like I could, I never got into it. So I'm just like not a fan. It's like the one genre I don't listen to, metal, and metal. But but people always assume that for some reason. I think that's really strange. And then they're always shocked when I tell them that my number one uh, genre that I listen to by far it is like not close is r&b and hip-hop i adore r&b i don't know why i don't know what in my brain because no one else in my family likes it either <laughs> it's like it's, it's literally just me i don't know what happened but i just really like got into i remember hearing a thing where it was like when you're like 14 or 15 your musical tastes like solidify mm -hmm. and for some reason i was just like on an r&b hip-hop train mm -hmm. and like that's just what i listen to where i listen to other stuff but it's like that's definitely what i've been listening to this entire interview <laughs> oh okay all right, all right. <laughs> so you know it's just it's just been running and, uh, <laughs> yeah so that's that's one thing sure is that like i don't talk about it often but i don't think a lot of people assume whether it be like stereotype or like off my voice or stuff I joke about and stuff, but like I like really listen to a lot of R and B and a lot of hip hop, and it's like it's definitely not something people expect or people ask about. Yeah, and uh, that that's probably the big one. The second thing, I don't know. I I guess it's not something that people don't ask about. I think that music one really is is the big one. Mm. I think the second thing that really kind of came to mind was just that like. I am so inspired and I feel so good. Like I get such a emotional like boom in my soul whenever I get to talk to people that are from a similar situation as myself where it's like people and I've get I've gotten like fans from streaming, I have mods and stuff that are from like the middle of nowhere. Oh yeah. And in the middle of nowhere it's like there's a hundred people in a hometown and I don't even live in town. I live a couple miles outside of town on a farm. Right. Like literally like you're in the middle of nowhere. Like town doesn't have a post office. So it's legally considered a village like <laughs> <laughs> type situation. Right. Yeah. And I think it's really cool to be able to talk to people in a similar situation and be like, if I can do it, other people can do it because whether it be economically or politically or any reason a lot of people in the middle of nowhere feel not i wouldn't say marginalized but overlooked mm. because it's like 
you don't have a lot of voting power so like representatives don't really care about you and you don't have a lot of like economic draw because there's not a lot of opportunities for jobs so people who normally grow up here move out like quickly Mm. which i understand Mm. and all this other stuff so it's like when people are like hey i'm from iowa too in like a town in the middle of nowhere it's like it's super cool to be able to kind of represent that where it's like normally in our group and also in media or video game characters or movies or whatever it's always like you know if you're american it's like texas new york california it's like those three parts and then it's like i'm very proud and very happy and incredibly willing to rep the middle of nowhere that just has like cornfields and people that work much harder than i do yeah on on stuff like that like my dad spent decades getting up at like four in the morning and working like 12 hours on like construction and shit just like going at it yeah so i am so incredibly juiced to be doing stuff like that where it's like like one of my emotes on twitch is just the state of iowa and like my the points on twitch about corn yes and just <laughs> like people were talking about like siege was running a thing where if you're a streamer you can get a charm in the game that represents you and it's like i would people would ask me what i would want if i did it and it's like i would just want the state of iowa it's like i don't even want to do it inherently for me i just want to do it for like <clears throat> for the people that are like in the middle of nowhere so, yeah, so yeah. i don't know it's uh that's one thing that i don't bring up often but occasionally where it's like i am so like happy to not even represent myself but more so just represent where the people that where i'm from and, and the people that don't really get representation on other stuff and it's not even representation in the sort of like in a diversity quota or diversity in any way it's more just like like you're in like the peak of flyover states yeah so like you don't really get like exposure on stuff other than like field of dreams which i've been to <laughs> and uh <laughs> they sell six they sell uh hoodies for 60 dollars. it's a fucking racket Jesus. and uh yeah i hate them but <laughs> understandable yes, uh, <laughs> yeah they're, they're bastards yeah but, yeah but yeah so that's probably that's probably like one thing that people don't maybe know a lot is that like hoo hoo ha ha like i am a, a jokester and a, and i do jest a lot and stuff but it's definitely like i like i i rap it hard mm-hmm. where it's like i'm a hundred percent down to try my best to leave like a positive impact on it's like if you don't know anything about iowa or if you're from iowa then it's like i can i can rep a little bit mm-hmm. of the state that no one really knows much about so yeah that's i'd probably say that that's my big thing no, that was, that's perfect those are great answers and definitely like I, I can I can see that it is it is often those people that, like yourself that are overlooked or underestimated and it's the you become a standout not just for yourself but like where you're from and the place that you represent so I get that and that, that's I love that answer that's great yeah and uh, it's it's just crazy because like like growing up in my school. It, it was like a common saying of like oh i'm not gonna amount to much i'm from here <laughs> it's like because it, it was like it was sarcastic as yeah, a joke yeah. right but it's like it is like there's no like especially from my area it's like there's no celebrity you can kind of point at there's no really the local hero was this dude that was like one of the first doctors that settled west of the Mississippi because you're so close and his house is there. And that's like, it's like a little historical monument and that's Mm. like it. So Mm. it's like, you know, and that was hundreds of years ago. So it's like, you don't really have like this musician or this actor, this like big person is like from my area or something. The closest one is like, I went to college in a town called Cedar Rapids and uh, like, 
Ashton Kutcher's from there, I think. <laughs> or like Elijah Wood was born there. That's kind of like your best <laughs> yeah. rep. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's like, not that inherently people around here even want to be represented, but mm-hmm. it's like, they kind of like just chilling and doing their thing, but I'm very happy to do it. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's something that I, I enjoy doing and I feel very proud to be able to do it i guess yeah so yeah uh, nothing wrong with hometown pride nothing at all yep absolutely love it let's set the stage for what's coming up next for you and uh where can people join you and be a part of your community online like you, you got twitch you got discord like yep. just pimp it out there um all right so i got twitch.tv forward slash the underscore grouse because the grouse was taken <laughs> and by an account with uh, like one stream from five years ago and they refused to give me the name. So, you know, it is what it is. Jesus. Uh, Twitter <laughs> is, yeah, I know, right? Twitter <laughs> is the grouse with an extra E on the the with an underscore because guess what was fucking taken? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Discord is discord.gg forward slash grouse, all lowercase. We have a custom URL because we're like that. Mm and uh and yeah that's that's where to find me i stream pretty often i try to do every other day sometimes i do spurts of multiple days in a row at 5 30 central 6 30 eastern you can do the conversions there and uh yeah that's kind of my main my main spots perfect yeah thank you i i dude i i am so blown away that the amount of time you've given me today is i I feel I feel like I know you better, but at the same time, like you, you just have like a mountain of stories behind you, and uh, the only way to really learn that is to just continue to be a part of your community. So thanks for letting me be a part of your day today. Oh well, thanks for for having me on. I remember when you DM'd me, I was like, "Do you want to do it?" It's just like, sure, fuck it, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll I'll talk about whatever. Like, like yeah, why not? So I, I'm just glad that you were down just to like hang out and listen to my incessant rambling about <laughs> random topic hey man it's what i do for a living <laughs> yeah uh, me too <laughs> i feel it thanks for making it to the end of this episode and if you don't mind whatever it is that you are enjoying this episode on be it on youtube the video form or wherever you're listening to this just please give me a follow that way you can keep up to date with new episodes as well it shows me that you are listening and you want more content and also it helps me out a lot so if you don't mind follow subscribe whatever it is that it is possible on this platform of your choosing and if you want to support me further the mediajack.ca there is patreon there is also other episodes and how to enjoy those and there is a merch store and of course if you join me on patreon you can actually get a shout out and be invited to ask questions to future guests or get a credit just like our executive producer yet again red wolf don again the mediajack.ca is where you can go for all of that and more thanks for joining me take care